Hi everyone, this is Mervic Pua, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to go through the suggested solution for 2020 A-Levels H2 Chemistry Paper 1, Question 8. Alright, Question 8 goes something like this. Which factor contributes to magnesium carbonate decomposing at a lower temperature than calcium carbonate? So option A, the charge density of Mg2 plus ion is higher than that of Ca2 plus ion. Option B, the standard enthalpy change of formation of magnesium oxide is less negative than that of calcium oxide. Option C, the lattice energy for magnesium carbonate is more negative than calcium carbonate. And finally, option D, the melting point of magnesium carbonate is lower than that of calcium carbonate. The topic tested in this question is actually fairly straightforward, involving the decomposition temperature of magnesium carbonate and calcium carbonate. This is actually under group 2. And the concept is focusing on the thermal decomposition of group 2 carbonates. So maybe let us just run through the concept first in order for us to understand which is the answer. Now involving thermal decomposition of group 2 carbonates, the focus will be on the charge density of your metal cation. So we do know that each metal cation has a certain charge density depending on the size and depending on the charge. So charge density let me show you here. Charge density is linked to this expression, charge divided by size. The bigger the charge, the smaller the size, I'll have a higher charge density. So we can see charge density as if I have a higher charge density, then this charge is very intense in a very small region. So if it has a higher charge density, then you have a greater polarizing power. You have a greater ability to go and distort or disturb the electron cloud of a neighboring species. So in the case of thermal decomposition, so what this metal cation is disturbing or distorting is the electron cloud of your carbonate, CO3 2 minus. So if I consider Mg2 plus versus Ca2 plus, Mg2 plus clearly it is higher up in the period as compared to Ca2 plus, so therefore it has a smaller size. So we would expect Mg2 plus to have a higher charge density because charge is the same, the size is smaller, charge density for Mg2 plus it is higher, so it will have greater polarizing power. Or sometimes we will just say that it is more polarizing. So if it is more polarizing, then you have a greater ability to pull the electron cloud of a neighboring anion, in this case my carbonate. So you notice the highlighted region, this orange portion, will be the extent of the distortion of the electron cloud. Of course, Largely, the species should be roughly spherical in terms of my anion. But if I have a neighboring cation, which is polarizing, pull the electron cloud away from your anion, so the electron cloud will be distorted as being represented here. If I compare this with Ca2+, Ca2+, the size is higher, it is less polarizing, it will pull the electron cloud of carbonate to a certain extent, but not as much as compared to your Mg2+. So what is the consequence? involving that. Now, if there's a greater distortion of electron cloud for your carbonate, what happens is it will weaken the bonds within the carbonate. Now, we can see this as the electron cloud distribution for your anion is supposed to be shared between carbon and the three oxygen. And when you have this electron cloud distribution, your carbonate has a certain stability. Now, this Mg2 plus comes along and it's trying to steal electrons away from your carbonate. It's trying to take electron distribution away from your carbonate. So now, this carbonate will have less electrons to distribute amongst itself, or less electron density to distribute amongst itself. And the consequence is, the bonds within your carbonate will weaken. Because this Mg2 plus is stealing electron density away from me. I have less electrons to distribute between my carbon and my three oxygen. So the bonds within your carbonate will weaken to a bigger extent as compared to what we have in calcium carbonate. So if the bonds are weakened to a bigger extent, then it'll be easier for me to break your uh, bonds within your carbonate. So you notice if I were to break this bond, then we say that decomposition takes place and it will decompose to give me magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide. You notice when you break one of the CO bond, my CO2 will be here. This will be my carbon dioxide. Of course, there will be some rearrangement of the electrons. Then this will be my CO2. 
and I'll end up with uh, oxide. So this is the reason why when we undergo decomposition of your uh, group 2 metal carbonates, I'll end up with the oxide plus CO2 gas evolved. So if the bonds within the carbonate is weakened to a bigger extent, and it requires less energy for me to break this bond to decompose your magnesium carbonate, so we would expect your magnesium carbonate will decompose at a lower temperature. Now there are different ways of saying this. I can say that your magnesium carbonate decompose at a lower temperature. I can say that this is thermally less stable. So effectively they mean the same thing. All right? So conversely, if I consider calcium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus the size is bigger, so therefore it has a lower charge density, not so polarizing, the polarizing power decreases. So the ability to pull the electron cloud of your carbonate weakens. The distortion of the electron cloud of your carbonate is to a smaller extent. So it requires more energy for me to break this bond to release my CO2. So it requires more energy to break the bond and your calcium carbonate should decompose at a higher temperature. Or I can say that calcium carbonate it is thermally more stable. So this is the concept involving thermal decomposition of our group 2 carbonates. We can extend this idea to other group 2 salts, group 2 nitrates, group 2 sulfates, and so on. The concept is exactly the same. As long as it is involving breaking some covalent bonds within the anion, then we can use the exact same idea and the exact same explanation to compare thermal stability of group 2 salts. So let us run through the option A, B, C, D, and we see which one makes more sense. Now for option A, charge density of Mg2 plus ion is higher than that of calcium 2 plus ion. Now this is true, and in fact this is the reason why my Mg2 plus has a higher polarizing power, can distort the electron cloud of my carbonate to a bigger extent, and weakens the bonds to a bigger extent. It will decompose more easily at a lower temperature. So A, it is a likely answer. It is okay to be the answer. Let's run through the other options, see whether do I have another reasonable answer. Now for B, standard enthalpy change of formation of magnesium oxide is less negative than calcium oxide. Now if I consider enthalpy change of formation, which is the formation of your compound from elements in a standard state. So if I consider the formation of this metal oxide, what is the equation? The equation is involving metal. It can be magnesium, it can be calcium metal plus half oxygen to give me metal oxide. Now you notice this process has nothing to do with the decomposition of your magnesium carbonate. So even if it is true, it is not relevant, correct? So B is out, B is actually rubbish, we're not so interested in that. Now C, that this energy for magnesium carbonate is more negative than that of calcium carbonate. Now if again I consider that this energy, that this energy is the energy release when you form one more of your ionic compound from the constituent gaseous ions, correct? We should know that. We learned this under energetics. So the process of this lattice energy will be something like this. Metal 2 plus plus CO3 2 minus to give me metal carbonate. Now, is this relevant here? Even though we are talking about your magnesium carbonate versus calcium carbonate, you notice the process of lattice energy is related to the separation of my ions, separating your M2 plus and your CO3 2 minus. So this is related to the strength of your ionic bond, and we can use this idea to compare melting point involving magnesium carbonate versus calcium carbonate because melting point involves separating our ions, all right? separating your cation from your anion. But in this case, if I'm talking about decomposition, decomposition targets the breaking of the covalent bonds within the carbonate. So this process is not being quantified by lattice energy. So lattice energy is also not relevant. So C is out, it is not relevant. Then finally D, if I consider melting point of your magnesium carbonate is lower than that of your calcium carbonate. Now melting point is more related to lattice energy and it is a physical change which again, if I come back to this question, when we consider decomposition, I am decomposing your metal carbonate to metal oxide plus CO2. So the melting point, which is a physical change, again, is not so relevant here. So D would also not be the answer. So again, if I run through these four options, A, B, C, D, the answer to this question will be option A. All right, so that was the discussion involving question eight 
If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.